So ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you all on uh, behalf of Sustainable Social Development Organization for today's dialogue. My name is Tanzila Mazhar and I'll be moderating today's opening session. I would request uh, Sara Ahmed Sahiba, Chairperson Child Protection Bureau of Punjab to join us on the stage. Dr. Ehsan Sadiq uh, has joined us on the stage. Senator Aisha Raza Farooq Sahiba, Chairperson National Commission on Rights of Child, please join us on the stage. Ashraf Zubair Siddiqui Saab, Additional Director General, FIA. And Minister Councillor for Political Affairs, Mr. Brad Parker, if you could join us on the stage, please. and Kosar Abbas Saab, Executive Director, System. And Sadia Hussain Saiba, Chairperson, Board of Directors, SSDO. If you could join us. We will begin our national dialogue on child trafficking and bonded labor. Reach every victim of trafficking, leave no one behind. There's the title for uh, World Day Against Trafficking in Person. Ladies and gentlemen, I would request you all, please rise for National Anthem of Pakistan. Now I would request Zahid Shah Sab to come on the stage and recite few verses from Holy Quran before we proceed for the first session. Bismillah والشمس تجلي لمستقر الله ذلك تقدير العزيز العليم والقمر قدرناه منازل حتى ذاك الفرجون القديم لا الشمس ينبغي 
Jazakallah. And now I would request uh, Executive Director SSDO, Sayyid Kosar Abbas Saab, to come on stage and welcome the audience. Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, thank you very much to uh, all the honorable guests for joining us uh, in this session. And I'm uh, really grateful to uh, all the departments, uh, especially the Child Protection Bureau of Punjab, uh, National uh, Ch uh, Child Protection Commission. Uh, we have uh, FIA from across Pakistan, from all the zon zonal offices. We have a uh, police department. We have labor department. We have uh, child protection authorities from uh, the provincial provincial level. We have honorable parliamentarians. Uh, and I'm sorry if I'm getting, forgetting uh, any department. Uh, so I'm really grateful for uh, joining us. And uh, uh, special thanks to uh, 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 honorable uh, uh, speakers of the opening ceremony. Uh, I'm really grateful to uh, Miss Sara Ahmed, uh, Child Protection Bureau Chairperson of Punjab. Uh, uh, she has extended her support to organize uh, this uh, event in collaboration with SSDO and uh, I'm uh, Grateful to uh, Honorable uh, Senator Aisha Raza Farooq Saiba, uh, Chairperson National Commission on Rights of uh, Child. Uh, thank you very much, ma'am, for, for your encouragement and uh, for joining us uh, in this session. Uh, I'm thankful to uh, Ashraf Zubair Siddiqui Saab, uh, additional DG of uh, FIA and Alam Shinwari Saab. Uh, Director of uh, FIA Anti-Human Trafficking Cell, sir, thank you very much. And also DG Mohsen Bhatsa because uh, he always uh, extended his support to SSDO's initiative. Uh, thank you very much to all the FIA team for uh, joining us and for your support. Uh, our mentor, uh, Dr. Asan Sadik Saab, uh, DG uh, National Police Bureau, sir, thank you very much for joining us and for your support. We have a political chief from uh, uh, U.S. Embassy, uh, sir, thank you very much for uh, joining us. Uh, we uh, are grateful to uh, uh, especially the U.S. Embassy for uh, supporting this initiative to organize uh, uh, this uh, massive campaign uh, to uh, to uh, to build the mechanism uh, among the different stakeholders, the coordination mechanism among different stakeholders to address the issue of trafficking in person in Pakistan. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't want to linger on my speech uh, uh, in the opening session because I want to give uh, the opportunity to my female colleague, uh, Miss Sadia, to further uh, continue this. And uh, thank you very much. I hope you'll be having uh, great sessions today, and especially the uh, the uh, sessions after lunch will which will be the which will be the breakout sessions so uh, i would request everyone to participate in those sessions and uh, do share your recommendations uh, uh, for the future improvement and we'll be like uh, uh, sharing the uh, 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 compiling and sharing the report with all the stakeholders to uh, uh, to develop the way forward thank you very much once again to all the uh, honorable participants thank you very much uh, kosar and uh now I will request Sadia Hussain Saiba, Chairperson Board of Directors, SSTO, for uh, her note and brief overview of the dialogue which, we, which is taking place today and what are we uh, looking at and issues regarding human trafficking and child trafficking. Thank you very much. Thank you, Abbas and um, Kosar, Abbas, and welcome once again. Uh, and and uh, thanks a lot for gathering for such a crucial event on child trafficking. Child protection and child rights is very close to my heart, being the uh, supporting person for this whole protection and um, child rights related sector here in Pakistan. Child trafficking is a significant problem in Pakistan, as we are all aware of this, with numerous cases reported each year, unfortunately. Estimates vary due to hidden nature of this crime, but it is believed that millions of children are living in conditions that can be termed essentially modern-day slavery. Children from marginalized communities especially 
such as those from lower socioeconomic backgrounds, religious and ethnic minorities, those um, living in remote regions, hard to reach regions, um, especially uh, the areas which have been displaced by conflicts and natural disasters such as 2022 floods that we experienced recently are especially susceptible to being trafficked. And God forbid we are again into monsoon season and uh, I hope that learning drawn from this event will guide us that how we can avoid uh, those child protection or especially child trafficking issues if um, we are faced a challenge of flood again uh, during this year's monsoon. Underlying social factors in Pakistan such as lack of education, limited economic opportunities and weak social support system contribute to their vulnerability. Right as we speak, Pakistan has the second highest number of out of school children in the world according to UNICEF. And um, again, according to some of the well-known experts in these sectors, it's, uh, it's, it's um, easily uh, understood these days that the children who are out of school, they are um, either involved in child labor, and when we say child labor, then they are uh, directly vulnerable to child trafficking. So out of school children or education is the key aspect that we need to look into. Child trafficking manifests itself in various forms, including forced labor that we just talked about, bonded labor, sexual exploitation, child marriage, child soldiers, organ trafficking, and domestic servitude. It is believed that 70% of people embroiled in bonded labor in Pakistan are unfortunately children. Many of them have been voluntarily placed into debt bondage by their impoverished parents or have essentially been born into debt bondage as a form of intergenerational bonded labor, whereby children end up inheriting their parents' debt trapped in never-ending vicious cycle of poverty. Child trafficking has severe and long-lasting consequences for the victims. They're deprived of their basic rights and are subject to intense physical, sexual, psychological, and emotional abuse, which is in most cases is an irreversible damage. Since 2021, SSDO with the support of the US mission in Pakistan is working on comprehensive and holistic program that aims to curb human trafficking in Pakistan by strengthening the capacity, coordination, and collaboration among various key and relevant stakeholders for the implementation of the legal framework to reduce trafficking in person, TIP, and increase direct referral of victims for services and rehabilitation. Protecting child rights is an integral component and cross-cutting theme in all of work, and that is why our programmatic interventions at SSDO take into special consideration child trafficking. We are actively working with provincial child protection authorities uh, at national level as well by training their staff, raising awareness of child trafficking at the grassroots level, and strengthening their coordination with other relevant stakeholders. To effectively tackle child trafficking and ensure its eradication, there is a dire need for a multi-sectoral response, which is why we are working with a diverse group of stakeholders uh, nationally at the provincial level, as well as at the regional and the global level, including policymakers, government agencies, law enforcement, legal fraternity, media, NGOs, community organizations, and internal partners. So I would like to say welcome once again to all of these stakeholders who are present here on our invitation. It is vital for us to work collaboratively by working on mass educational campaigns, community outreach programs, community mobilizations, strengthening legislation and law enforcement, working on victim-centric rehabilitation, providing medical and psychosocial support, and strengthening international cooperation and collaboration. 
We hope that this conference will give all of us a chance to strengthen cooperation and collaboration by sharing best practices, exchanging information and supporting initiatives aimed at addressing the root causes and consequences of child trafficking, capacitating stakeholders and empowering survivors. So that lies at the center of this whole uh, sector. Everyone here is an expert in their own domain and is a big support of this whole challenge of child trafficking. And we believe that by putting all these resources and skill together, significant progress can be made gradually and steadily. Thank you very much once again. Thank you so much, Sadia Ahmed. Uh, since we have been facing uh, natural calamities and uh, displaced families, so vulnerability of uh, children uh, increase in such uh, you know, circumstances. And children are most vulnerable to sexual, psychological, and economic exploitation, including child trafficking. Now, I would request uh, Sara Ahmed Saiba, Chairperson, Child Protection Bureau, Punjab, that uh, she come on stage and uh, on the podium and share her thoughts about how special initiatives to protect children can make a difference for these children. Please welcome Sara Ahmed Saiba. And she is doing wonderful work. Um, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Honorable guests, ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu alaikum. A nation cannot progress if it cannot protect its children. This is what I firmly believe in. And keeping this in mind, I decided to join and head the Child Protection and Welfare Bureau, which is part of the Punjab government. And four years ago, I joined this department. Thank you all for being here today on such a crucial national dialogue on two pressing issues, which we are talking about, child trafficking and bonded labor, which continue to plague our society. It's imperative that we address these concerns head on Create awareness, because awareness doesn't cost anything. And that's the easiest thing that we all can do together. This is a perfect occasion to talk about this, because all stakeholders are here under one roof. And a big credit for this goes to SSDO, because I feel SSDO is one of the best organizations which, uh, which make an effort, who makes an effort in getting all stakeholders together. Because if we don't do dialogue, if we don't talk, then we can't move, then implementation cannot take place. We can only go for actions if we first resolve and make a strategy, make some policy. And policy comes out of such events at which we are present here. So I appreciate SSDO once again, and all the partners supporting SSDO. NCRC is also supporting SSDO chairperson is present here. I also appreciate her. And all the esteemed guests who've taken out their valuable time and have come here today to talk about children. Children who are the future assets of Pakistan, who should be the most important, who should be a priority for all, go all governments to come. So uh, moving on, there are multiple socioeconomic factors that contrib contribute to child trafficking and bonded labor, which are the topics for today's discussion, which include poverty, illiteracy, and social inequality. I'll discuss briefly the role of Child Protection and Welfare Bureau. So the Child Protection and Welfare Bureau and government of Punjab aims at eradicating child beggary, abuse, and violence from the province of Punjab. Also at rehabilitating and transforming the children who we rescue from the streets into independent individuals who are self-sufficient. I'll give a detailed presentation as we move on about the work that we are doing in Punjab. Our Director General and the entire team of child protection, the representatives of different uh, district heads, they're present here at this event to support this cause. We need to remember that the fight against child trafficking and bonded labor requires a collective commitment and unwavering determination. And only then we can achieve this goal of combating this violence. So let us unite, empower our children and build a society where their rights are safeguarded, their dreams are nurtured, and their well-being is our utmost priority. The Child Protection Welfare Bureau assumes a very important role when we talk, talk about child trafficking, because we are dealing with child labor, child abuse, child beggary, 
and it all involves child trafficking because we've seen that more than 90% of the cases that are reported to us and we rescue child uh, labor, laborers and child beggars and abuse victims, nine, more than 90% are those who are not from that particular city. They have been trafficked from some other place. So this is a very important issue. So the Bureau addresses the multifaceted challenges posed by child domestic working, which often involves exploitation and trafficking. The Bureau works to identify, rescue, and provide comprehensive support to individuals who have fallen victim to the heinous crime of human trafficking. Furthermore, the CPWB offers a range of services, such as medical care, counseling, legal support, and skill building programs tailored to the unique needs of each survivor. We're dealing with real life survivors, and this is the only government agency in Pakistan who has the mandate and who is actually operational and going to the streets and rescuing such survivors, beggars, and abuse victims. We have rescued over 540 child domestic workers in the last one year, which, of course, a great percentage of, uh, is of those who were trafficked, as I explained earlier. In addition, the Bureau is actively involved in advocacy and awareness with the help of such amazing NGOs as SSDO. An awareness which is aimed at preventing child abuse and human trafficking by educating communities, raising awareness, and promoting systematic changes the Bureau strives to eradicate this grave violence in Punjab of child abuse and everything related to children, all sorts of violence against children. So in the end, I would again welcome you all and thank you so much for participating with us in this um, discussion. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, and we also wanted to thank uh, Sindh Human Rights Commission. Iqbal Deto Saab, you are here. Thank you very much for joining us. And Shahid Shafiq Saab, uh, DG Sindh Judicial Academy. Because I forgot to mention your names. And he sent me this that I should uh, welcome you on uh, his behalf and SSDO's behalf. It is important to understand existing mechanism to protect children in Pakistan. And it is also immensely important to identify gaps in, in legislative framework and implementing uh, mechanisms. That is why we invited uh, um, all these uh, you know, wonderful speakers in this session so they could share with you what are the challenges which are faced by the children and also by the you know, existing uh, bodies who are there but uh, maybe they can do better uh, if uh, we are collaborating uh, in, in, in so many ways and on various levels. I would now request Senator Aisha Raza Farooq Saiba. She's chairperson, National Commission on Rights of Child, that uh, she come here and share her thoughts and also share the mandate of commission and work uh, which her commission is doing right now. Please welcome. Thank you. Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Honorable guests, dear friends, Assalamu Alaikum and a very good morning. It is a pleasure to be here, uh, especially as chairperson of the National Commission on the Rights of Child. And we welcome the occasion to discuss the issue of child trafficking and bonded labor. And here I must appreciate and congratulate SSDO, the US Embassy, the Child Protection Welfare Bureau, Punjab for giving everyone an opportunity to discuss the very, very critical issues that affect the children of the world, the region, and Pakistan. We acknowledge that in a context of climate and economic crisis, this dialogue is crucial. And we are committed to supporting efforts to identify solutions and subsequently develop a relevant, child-centric way forward. I want to start with clarifying what the role and mandate of the National Commission on the Rights of Child is, so that when we break into working groups later, we are well aware of our respective roles and responsibilities. So the Commission is an independent statutory body established by the government of Pakistan for the protection, promotion, and fulfillment of children's rights. The NCRC has the mandate to examine and review policies, laws, practices, to inquire into violations of children's rights, conduct research, uh, conduct awareness and advocacy, provide technical support and advise all governments, federal and provincial, 
on policy and legislative matters by virtue of the National Commission on the Rights of Child Act 2017. So this is what we can do, and hence we hope that this discussion will help precisely identify what the Commission must and can do, and by when to help counter both child trafficking as well as bonded labor in Pakistan. The issues surrounding bonded labor and trafficking have been highlighted by earlier speakers, and the importance of these cannot be underscored enough. We know that child trafficking and child bonded labor remain significant challenges, not just in Pakistan, but globally as well as regionally. And these are interlinked, and thus we must think about, discuss, and in the end suggest a holistic multi-sectoral approach. In 2018, Pakistan enacted the Prevention of Trafficking in Persons Act. We also know that forced labor is an offense under the Pakistan Penal Code, and some laws have been enacted at provincial levels to end bonded labor. While some form of exploitation, such as sexual exploitation, is a criminal offense under our federal laws. Yet, and despite all these laws, according to the 2018 Global Slavery Index by the Walk Free Foundation, approximately 2.13 million people, including adults and children, live in modern slavery in Pakistan. The overwhelming reality, ladies and gentlemen, is that children are still highly vulnerable to trafficking, bonded labor, and various other forms of abuse that characterize these crimes. And we recognize, therefore, that far more needs to be done to help the children of our country. Pakistan's exponential population growth, its structural inequalities, lack of awareness among communities and justice actors, insufficient women and child-centric resource allocation, harmful traditional practices, distorted religious interpretations, coupled with paucity of support services, exacerbate the challenges to end both child trafficking and bonded labor in our country. So given our mandate, we believe that the Commission can address child trafficking in bonded labor by raising awareness through both mass media and public awareness campaigns and by engaging with communities. We can help with collaborating with law enforcement agencies, some of whom are represented here today, to improve gender and child-sensitive investigation and prosecution rates, help build capacities of justice actors to ensure adequate prevention and response, facilitate referral of victims to service providers, develop robust data collection mechanisms, and conduct research to inform evidence-based interventions, which includes policy as well as legal reforms, strengthen multi-sectorial coordination to prevent and respond to child trafficking and bonded labor, and conveying and supporting your recommendations to the concerned bodies and following on how those advice have been granted due consideration. We must also be aware of the intersectional nature of child trafficking and bonded labor. Hence, I would like to reaffirm that we will continue our current efforts to counter child domestic labor, which can be a form of bonded labor or often entail uh, internal trafficking. We will pursue our endeavors to each child protection laws to have its rules notified. We will continue our engagement for the validated child protection mechanisms comprising case management, referral systems, and family-based alternative care systems to be notified in each province under the relevant laws. Last but not the least, we will continue our efforts to make sure that laws related to sexual violence, particularly rape, are enforced and improved in a gender and child sensitive manner. I would like to conclude by remark by reiterating our commitment to making a tangible difference in the best interests of our children. In alignment with our mandate, the constitution of the Islamic Republic of Pakistan, as well as our interna international obligations. So thank you once again. I look forward to an interesting dialogue later on, and we look forward to collaborating with all stakeholders and learning from you all. Thank you. Thank you, Aisha Saiba. How can we uh, create a safer environment for our children? And the uh, role of uh, law enforcement agencies uh, is uh, very, very important. Now I would uh, invite Ashraf Zubair Siddiqui Sahib, Additional Director General uh, FIA, to share her, uh, his thoughts uh, about the issue. 
प्लीज वेलकम अशरफ जुबैर सिद्दीकी बिस्मिल्लाम डिस्टिंगश गेस्ट लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन असलम एंड गुड मॉर्निंग आई वुड लाइक टू थैंक द एस एस डी ओ फॉर इन्वाइटिंग अस टू अटेंड द नेशनल डायलॉग ऑन चाइल्ड ट्रैफिकिंग इन पर्सन एंड बॉन्डेड लेबर ह्यूमन ट्रैफिकिंग इज अ कॉम्प्लेक्स ग्लोबल फिनमिन नॉट ओनली इन पाकिस्तान बट ग्लोबली द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट फॉर्म ऑफ ह्यूमन ट्रैफिकिंग इज ऑफ वमेन एंड चिल्ड्रेन The incidents of human trafficking are reported to the law enforcement agencies, different departments, and organizations, and are highlighted in the media too. The Department of Labor handles bonded labor cases under Bonded Labor System Abolition Act. Trafficking in persons, which includes men, women, children, and transgender persons, occurs in three stages: that is, recruitment, transportation, and exploitation. recruitment means that a person is targeted to be trafficked Transport, transportation means the victim will be taken from one place to another within or outside the borders and exploitation means that he she will be sexually exploited and will be indulged into forced labor federal investigation agency deals with transport border trafficking in person cases while local police enforce and prosecute child trafficking and bonded labor trafficking in person cases occurring within the country pakistan has taken a number of steps to address the challenge the main focus of the government intervention is based on four core areas also called as four p's which are prevention of human trafficking protection of victims prosecution of offenders working with national and international partners We have been able to make significant progress and achieve most of the targets set forth in the national action plan by increasing the number of prosecutions and convictions, raise public awareness, improve capacity building, develop and strengthen cooperation mechanism among relevant bodies, enhance border control functions and develop and strengthen international cooperation. Anti-human trafficking committees have been established at national, provincial and district level. for enhanced interdepartmental coordination and a robust concerted effort to fight the menace hundreds of investigators and prosecutors across the country have been trained in joint training sessions conducted by FIA and the UNODC FIA Khyber Pakhtunkhwa police and Punjab police have adopted specific trafficking in person modules in their training syllabi while the rest of the two provinces are in the process of adopting the same there are several child protection and victim facilitation centers in pakistan these centers provide specialized facilities that is non formal education mainstreaming into government schools health and hygiene sessions entertainment indoor sports recreational trips skill trainings medical care psychosocial counseling life skill guidance reunification and referral of runaway children to the child protection bureaus Anti-human smuggling and human trafficking directorate of the FIA is already linked with all relevant departments through its data center for accurate and timely data reporting, sharing and analysis. This will further be upgraded in the coming months with new equipment and software. The federal and provincial government in collaboration with national and international organizations have taken various measures to eradicate child labor. For example, the word domestic labor has been added in the schedule of the employment of children act and as a result domestic labor child labor is banned at federal level fia has established link offices in its embassies in eight countries fia makes use of interpol mous and mutual legal assistance to fight the curb of trafficking and migrant smuggling unodc icmpd iom and international partners are providing technical and logistic support to the FIA in the areas of preventing trafficking in persons and migrant smuggling that has tremendously helped us in our efforts to combat this menace despite all these efforts to combat the evil of human trafficking we have a long way to address the risk being faced by potential victims of human trafficking adverse economic conditions arising out of high population growth 
lack of legal employment opportunities, extreme poverty, natural climatic disasters like the recent floods, and a number of other socioeconomic conditions put a majority of vulnerable segments of the society at risk of becoming victims of human trafficking. In the end, I would like to extend my gratitude to SSDO for holding this workshop and inviting us to share the efforts that have been made by FIA and other departments and organizations to curb this evil. It was because of these efforts that Pakistan was ranked among tier two countries, moving up from the tier two watch list countries. I would like to mention uh, one of our illustrious officers, Sardar Zahir. He was awarded with the Tip Hero Award by the US Secretary of State this year. Uh, in the end, I, would, I want to thank our international partners for the continued support to FIEA. I'm confident that our joint efforts will help in creating mass awareness, leading to prevention of this exploitation and evil in society, making lives of our citizens better. Thank you. Thank you, Siddiqui Saab. Now I would request uh, Dr. Ehsan Sadiq Saab, uh, DG hai, National Police Bureau, ke wo, uh, he could uh, come and share his thoughts with us, uh, how police is uh, handling this issue of human trafficking and especially child trafficking. Please welcome Dr. Ehsan Sadiq. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Assalamu alaikum and very good morning, especially to welcome my uh, colleagues from international community. I am glad to be part of uh, today's event uh, for more than one reason. One reason is that I see a lot of very relevant uh, people sitting here and some of them I personally know and some of them I have just uh, come to know. I have been hearing about them and I uh, compliment their dedication. Uh, the two chairpersons sitting uh, uh, on the stage with me as co-panelists uh, are known for their dedication and their commitment to this child uh, cause of the children. Similarly, my colleague from FIA, I know him for last many years, Mr. Alam Shinwari, he's sitting here, and Iqbal Detho Saab and Shahid Saab, they're all very, very dedicated uh, persons who have lived for the cause of human rights and for the betterment of the society. Uh, my compliments also to SCTO and US Embassy for organizing this event. Uh, my second reason for being uh, happy and glad today is that it's a follow-up of an earlier conference on uh, trafficking in person, which was held uh, a few months back. And usually we see that uh, such events are one-off and they are not followed up. Uh, but uh, not only that event was followed up, but a very professional uh, report on the, uh, that event. And, uh, uh, the recommendations that emanated from those discussions were documented, were disseminated, and uh, we are also acting on some of those recommendations which you have uh, shared with us. Uh, secondly, the focus is very important. Uh, while when we talk about bonded labor and trafficking, it actually hides some of the most uh, horrible aspects of this uh, issue and this crime. And one of them is what we are discussing today, the child uh, trafficking and uh, this issue of child exploitation. And so this is very, very important. For years, we have been talking about gender-based violence and uh, other issues relating to, related to gender, but uh, children have not been in that focus as we are seeing it today. And that's very heartening because uh, the trauma, as we mentioned, uh, we listen from different speakers, the trauma that they suffer because of their age, the impressions they, uh, which are etched on their minds and hearts stay for the rest of their lives with them. So the issue of uh, 
age is very very important uh, as a consideration and the second most important issue is their vulnerability because of their age because of their lack of understanding of different dynamics they are more vulnerable so we as a society has more responsibility uh, to be proactive to be more uh, uh, forceful in our actions and uh, i personally feel that a measure of civilization of society is how much protection it and how many safeguards provides against uh, vulnerable section of the society so it's very important that uh, we we take it, it in that spirit for resolution and redressal of any problem the first prerequisite is to recognize it as a problem so it is again very heartening to see that as society we are now recognizing that it's an issue of course there are broader issues of poverty and inequality and unemployment and as we heard earlier that pakistan is highest in out of school children population so all this these issues not withstanding we has uh, law enforcement officials both in fia and uh, police as well as from the social protection uh, departments or from the child protection bureaus or at the apex level the uh, commissions that we have in place we all have an obligation to be more proactive and uh, to be more uh, uh, forthcoming in our response and shaping the, the response as well so uh, with that comes again another element that makes it so distinct is element of again it was mentioned earlier as well the voluntarily that most of the victims are forced into bonded labor or other forms of uh, you know where the children are susceptible to be exploited uh, by the consent of their parents but the very fact that this this element makes us ignore as a problem uh, has to be uh, brought up as uh, something which we all understand and then uh, give due consideration in shaping our responses uh, so my request to my colleagues from police and uh, fia fia is the coordinating body uh at the national level but uh, at the field level the police officer sitting here uh, mr khalid awan is very very uh, proactive uh, in these areas he is from islamabad police uh their main job is that don't look at it merely from a crime just a crime issue where we apprehend uh, criminals and uh, traffickers and we just show it in stats and figures that how many people we have arrested and but i think we have to go a step further and especially focus on the the victim support and rehabilitation and their special needs have to be addressed and for that we have to co-opt with other agency civil society organizations and uh, maybe we have to uh, induct some consultants and psychological support services and referral services have to be in place as well because it's not just merely a typical uh, crime related issue it has wider uh, and as mentioned earlier it has multi sectoral dimensions so it's very important that we take into consideration all these aspects at national police bureau we are uh, mandated under the trafficking in persons rules 2020 to have the database on all kinds of trafficking in person including the uh, child trafficking as well so we are now in the process of uh, uh, building the database uh, segregated database and we hope that uh, in coming weeks we'll be able to uh, generate reports uh, on the issue uh, we discussed it last week with the uh, coser and we saw that there are many many gaps in the data that we are receiving so we will uh, try to bridge those those gaps national police bureau is also uh, undertaking uh, preparation of national strategy against organized crime 
and trafficking in person is of course one of the very important challenges that we'll be looking into and trying to uh, put it in that uh, strategy so uh, we'll be uh, addressing some of the issues uh, which i have highlighted and my co-panelists have highlighted uh, earlier on i'm very grateful that uh, the the international community uh, which extends support to fia the police and other agencies and we are very very grateful for your support in our endeavors and we value it uh, and i hope that this collaboration will uh, continue and that's the way forward whether at national level whether with our international partners within the agencies and uh, because it's, it's as we heard earlier uh, it's not just one department's job it has to be very holistic multi-sectoral and uh, very synergized so with these words i again thank you cdo professor abbas aapko and all your team and uh, the us embassy who has uh, helped to uh, hold this event today thank you very much thank you very much dr hasan indeed it's very important uh, for all of us to come together to help these uh, victim children to overcome trauma they face and um, in the end i would request uh, our today's guest of honor minister counselor for political affairs us embassy mr brad parker to come here and share his views with us please welcome mr brad parker thank you uh, honorable chief guest dr sn sadik distinguished parliamentarians government officials civil society representatives journalists activists dear guests assalamu alaikum and good morning i am grateful for the opportunity to address this esteemed gathering at the pakistan national dialogue on child trafficking and bonded labor i would like to express my sincere appreciation to the ssdo thank you in bringing together government officials and various stakeholders to discuss ways to combat trafficking in pakistan as you all know human trafficking is an appalling and pervasive crime that knows no borders it is a global crisis that affects both pakistan and the united states the true extent of this crime is often hidden from view making it challenging to determine the exact numbers of people affected however it is estimated that around 25 million people worldwide including millions of women and children are victims of human trafficking in some form this crime not only violates human rights and dignity but it also poses a threat to national security distorts markets and enriches transnational criminals and terrorists the us government places a very high priority on fighting human trafficking and we are proud to be long standing partners of anti trafficking efforts in pakistan the us mission to pakistan has adopted a multi pronged approach to support pakistan in combating trafficking in persons this approach includes raising public awareness about this crisis connecting pakistani law enforcement and members of the judiciary with their counterparts in the united states who possess valuable experience and expertise in countering human trafficking and also collaborating with civil society advocates non-government organizations working on the ground like many of you here today our collaboration with ssdo also aligns with this approach through our partnership we are working to strengthen coordination and collaboration between public and private sector institutions to combat trafficking to enhance journalistic capacity for reporting on trafficking in persons to increase public awareness and to better identify trafficking victims and refer more of them to services and rehabilitation and lastly to advocate for an enhanced prevention and prosecution of trafficking crimes Last year we facilitated an international visitor leadership program which involved sending Pakistani judges and law enforcement officials handling trafficking in persons cases in Pakistan to the United States. This program aimed to familiarize these officials with various government institutions, NGOs and stakeholders working tirelessly to curb and hopefully ultimately end trafficking in the United States. We believe government officials around the world 
must understand trafficking patterns to make proper arrests and must understand how the crime of trafficking affects its victims in order to properly identify those victims and assist them. The global response to trafficking as articulated in the UN Palermo Protocol and US le legislation, and as mentioned by Mr. Siddiqui from FIA, revolves around the 4P framework, prosecution of traffickers, protection of victims, prevention of trafficking, and perhaps most importantly, partnerships to combat trafficking. The State Department's annual Trafficking in Persons Report highlights the importance of these partnerships, shares valuable lessons learned, and showcases examples of effective collaborations between governments, international organizations, civil society, the private sector, and other stakeholders. I am delighted to mention that this year's report recognizes eight trafficking in persons heroes, among whom is Pakistan's own Deputy Inspector General of the Police Service, Zahir Ahmed. These heroes, including Zahir, have dedicated their lives to the fight against human trafficking in their respective countries, serving as an inspiration for all of us to redouble our efforts in this fight against this heinous crime and to extend the best protections we can to its victim, victims and survivors. In conclusion, let me express my gratitude once again to all the participants present here today. You are the heart of this effort. Your unwavering commitment and support are essential in what is a collective endeavor around the world to eradicate trafficking in persons and bonded labor. Together, let us continue to work hand in hand across borders and sectors and to bring an end to this grave violation of human rights with an intention to ensure a safer and more just future for all of us, especially our children. Thank you. Thank you very much. A round of applause for the speakers of our opening session. Because we are moving towards tea, so I thought I should really wake you up. But thank you so much for uh, being very keen uh, listeners and audience.